Hello, good day. Welcome to my course on using AI to code. We will be using artificial intelligence to code. This course consists of a step-by-step -step guide on how we use AI to code. AI seems to have become the future technology and it is developing very fast. It is, um, it is increasing at a very high rate. So a brief introduction before we go into the main series proper. We'll be talking about artificial intelligence, that is AI. We'll also talk about chat GPT, which is the focus AI for this series. Then we'll also talk about chat GPT and embedded systems, how they relate and how we can use chat GPT for embedded system projects. Artificial intelligence has revolutionized many aspects of modern life, starting from our personal assistants like the Siri and Alexa to self-driving cars and smart homes. However, one emerging area of AI that has the potential to transform the way we develop software is using AI to code. Just like I said, that AI is developing very fast at a very high rate. The idea behind this approach is to use machine learning algorithms to automate various aspects of the coding process such as generating code snippets, detecting errors and optimizing performance. This could make, not, is not this could make, it makes software development faster more efficient and less error prone. So that is um, a little introduction about AI. It also has the potential to open new possibilities for innovation and productivity in the tech industry at large. However, there are also concerns about the ethical implications of using AI to code and the potential impacts on jobs in the field. So that is a brief introduction about artificial intelligence. So talking about ChatGPT, which is a focused AI for this course, ChatGPT is essentially a large language model built on top of an open AI on the GPT 3.5 technology. So essentially, just GPT allows you to ask long form questions in a human format and it will reply in a human like quality. Take note, it is a text based AI, so it does not generate pictures. So, for this course, we'll be looking at using that GPT for embedded systems course. As the field of embedded systems continue to evolve, developers face increasing challenges in creating efficient and effective solutions. One promising tool for addressing these challenges is ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI that is capable of generating human-like tests based on a given prompt or input, just as I explained earlier about chat GPT being a text-based AI. By leveraging the power of chat GPT, developers can generate solutions for embedded systems projects that are more efficient and user-friendly. For example, chat GPT can be used to generate text-based responses to natural language queries, allowing users to interact with embedded systems in a more conversational and intuitive manner. Additionally, ChatGPT can be used to generate code for embedded systems projects, such as the implementation of a specific functionality or the optimization of system performance. This can save developers time and effort by automating certain tasks, allowing them to focus on more complex challenges. Moreover, ChatGPT can also be used to generate documentation and other technical resources for 
embedded systems projects. This can help to improve the usability and accessibility of these systems, particularly for users who may be less familiar with technical jargon or terminology. Overall, using ChatGPT to generate solutions for embedded systems projects represents an exciting frontier in the field of natural language processing. By leveraging or by using this powerful tool, developers can create more effective and user-friendly embedded systems that meet the needs of a wide range of applications and users. So this is uh, a little introduction of how ChatGPT can be interfaced in embedded systems, use it to build embedded systems pro projects and it can generate codes too for embedded systems. So what are the objectives of this series, what we hope to achieve? In this series, we will show how we can use AI to write codes and programming for embedded systems. We will also show how to use ChatGPT to write code for ESC projects. We will also show how to use ChatGPT to fix error in codes. We will do all this using Wokui. Wokui is an online Arduino simulator. Wokui is an online Arduino simulator. Wokui.com that is the website. So this is it. There are project templates for it. You can also start from scratch to build a template. So you create an account, you sign in or sign up with your Google account. We'll be using Wokui in this project to simulate it. It's an online Arduino simulator. So that's for so let's get started and dive into the project and see the amazing features of Wokui and Chat GPT AI. Let's get started. Now we're going to create an account with the Chat GPT AI platform. So we'll type ChatGPT in the browser and click on the first link. That is the one for ChatGPT. So this is the website. We can go through the website and read more documentations on it. So now we'll just create an account. You'll come to the button here, try ChatGPT. So we open a page that requires us to either log in or sign up. But for first time users, we are going to sign up. We will be signing up with our Google account or you just input your email. So I will be using my Google account for it. Okay, and now this is the chat GPT interface where we input the text for the where we input the text and it replies back. You can see the cursor there waiting for us to type something. You can change to dark mode. This is just the interface. So let's get started with the first project. Welcome back to project 1. In this project, we will start off with something simple. We will be blinking an LED, a single LED. So we are in our work we Let's build from scratch. We are going to draw the circuit from scratch and assemble the component needed. So let's look for build from scratch. Okay, this is it. Start from scratch. So we have the Arduino for we have the circuit and simulation part on the right hand and the codes part on the left hand. So over to Chat GPT. We already created an account with them, so we don't need to sign up again. We will just log in and go straight to the user interface. Well, everything is set. So in the typing box, we need to be specific very well so that the 
AI understands what we want to do. So we'll tell it to write an Arduino code. We need to be specific there. We need to be specific Arduino code because it can generate code in another language. So write an Arduino code to blink an LED and explain how the connections are made. Because we want to, in this series, we are showing how we can use chat GPT to build embedded systems projects. So it's write the code, not only writing the code, it's going to explain how the connections are made. So I will just hang on a little bit while it generates the code and explains the connection. At the end of this particular project, I'm going to explain the code. I'll do so for each of the projects that we'll be doing using the chat GPT AI. Okay, so it's done. It's done. You can see the instructions on how the connections are made. How we connect the positive plug, the negative plug, and the resistor used. So we come over to our workery and we get the components we need. We need an LED and we also need the resistor. So let's um, let's reduce the size of this Arduino. It's too big. Need to reduce it a little bit more. Okay, then we need a resistor. So initially this resistor is not um okay let's get a breadboard the resistor is not 220 ohms and we need 220 ohms so we need to change the value of the resistor let me just arrange these components bring down the breadboard to the middle oh that's that's an, that's an error there get rid of the wire so to change the value of the resistor when you click on the resistor you come over to the left side and click on diagram.json then you can see the resistor it has 1000 so we just change it to we change the value to 220 so any value you want to use for your project you change it from here so back to the code uh, let's follow the instructions given by chat gpt for the connection So the positive leg goes to pin 13 and the negative leg goes to the resistor and from the resistor it goes to the ground of the Arduino. So let's get the LED in place. Let's get it in place. Okay. So the positive leg according to the chart GPT will go to pin 13 on the Arduino board. So pin 13 there, then the resistor. The resistor, okay, we cannot rotate it. The resistor will go to the negative part of the LED. Oh, sorry for that, sorry about that. Okay, to go to the negative part of the LED, let's move it up a little bit, okay. So from the other end of the resistor, it's going to go to the ground of the Arduino. Okay, and it's connected. Let's copy the code now, since the connections are already in place, let's copy this Arduino code. I'll just copy this and paste the one we copied from chat GPT and next we will use simulate and see what we have if it's going to blink. Okay, uh, we have our project. We are blinking the LED. All instructions are code. We are getting from the chat GPT AI. So we'll move on to project two but before then i'm going to explain this code for for uh for some reasons i'll just explain it i'll do the simple one but we'll just explain it i'll do so for other projects so 
this is the code okay so um, this is the code for the project one this is the void setup in line 2 it sets pin mode 13 as output because the LED is connected to pin 13 so it sets it as output pin here then coming, coming over to the loop line 6 it turns the LED at pin 13 on then after a delay of 1 second it goes off and after another delay of 1 second the whole loop goes again because that is what loop does it keeps occurring until the program is interrupted or, or the power is cut off so that is basically the explanation of this code and how it works so we'll see you in the next project thank you for this series in project 1 we blinked an LED for project 2 we'll be using 5 LEDs to create a light chest effect so I'll input that in the Arduino in the sorry in the chat GPT box I want to create a light chest effect with 5 LEDs so I'll ask it to write an Arduino code for it and explain how the connections are made as well so I want to create a latest number with 5 LEDs write an Arduino code For it and explain how the connections are made. Okay, so um, okay, it has started responding. It's going to write the Arduino code now. Okay, setting up void setup now, declaring the pin modes as output now in the void loop using um, the for loop to light them up at intervals. Now it's not writing the code, it's explaining what it wrote in the code, the setup and the loop. Now it's explaining how we are going to make the connections. So basically, ChatGPT will tell you everything based on how you input your request. So everything is being explained, the code is there. The explanations and the connections are here as well, how we can connect them. So we'll go over to our work we and we'll get the components and assemble them just as ChatGPT has instructed. So we need a breadboard. We need a breadboard. We need five LEDs of different colors, as well as five resistors. So let's set up that.
jungle. LEDs are set up with the resistor. So we'll connect um, the negative of the breadboard to ground of the Arduino. We we'll change the color to black. Same thing for all the uh, all the ground of the LEDs. They'll be connected to the ground of the breadboard. Since the ground of the breadboard has been connected to ground of the Arduino Uno, so we change the colors to black. Now we we'll go back to ChatGPT and check the pinouts. They are connected from pin two through six. So we are going to do that. We need to make the connection to be as neat as possible. Oh, that's a mistake there. Okay. This will go to pin 3. This will go to pin 4. This will go to pin 5. And we'll have the last one which will go to pin 6. So the connection is done. We'll go ahead and we'll copy the code we'll copy the code provided from chat gpt we'll, go, we'll come over to our OP and paste it so let's uh let's simulate and see if it is correct okay so we have our second project up and running after following the instruction from chat gpt so let's move on to the third project as we progress higher. Stay tuned. Okay, so welcome to the code explanation for project 2. So let's start from line 1. In line 1, we use the array method to declare pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as lead pins. Pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as, as lead pins. Then in line 2, we um, declare the delay time 100 milliseconds. Normally you see a delay here, delay 1000 milliseconds, but we set it to 100 there. So inside this um, inline 13, there's no need writing 100 again. We we'll just put delay time because we've already assigned a value 100 to the variable delay time. Then coming over to the setup, line 5 and 6, we use the for loop to declare the pins from 2 to 6 as output pins. So we declare them as output pins. Then coming to pin 11 to 14. Pin ele um, line 11 to 14. We use the same for loop to trigger the lead on one after the other and also trigger them off in the same sequence with a delay time of 100 milliseconds. So um, this is the code explanation for project. So this is how it works. So Let's move over to Project 3. See you in the next episode. And welcome back to Project 3. In Project 2, we built a LED chasing effect with 5 LEDs. In Project 3, we are going to be building a mini weather station using the DHT22 sensor and an LCD display. So in the chat GPT we are going to be very specific or we'll explain the components we are using because some of these components uses a special library. So if we don't specify the components we are using it might um, assume many components and assume many library as well which you give errors in our code or the simulation won't turn out well so we are going to tell you the components we are using 
like I said, I'm using a DHT2 2 temperature sensor alongside the LCD 16 by 2 I2C. Then we're gonna tell this to write an Arduino code that will display the values gotten from the sensor on the LCD. We want to build a mini weather station that um, displays the weather information within a particular region. Is also going to explain how the connections are made. So, whenever you encounter this error, don't panic. All you need to do is just to refresh the page and ask the person again. Just refresh the page, there's no cause for alarm. Okay, so, we're gonna paste the same thing again and just sit back and watch it generate the code and instructions on how the connections are made. And as usual, I'm going to be explaining the code at the end of this episode or in the part 2 of this episode. Okay, so it's done with the code and the instructions on how to connect it as well. This is the code and the, you know, the instructions are below. This is the code. These are the instructions. So next we are going to head over to our WOKWI platform where we are going to set up the components and simulated but before then like i said some libraries are used so we need to ask what libraries are used for this so that we know the library to install i will show us how to install library in wokwi it's quite different from um, the normal arduino ide the way we install library so i can see we need the dht library and the liquid case to y to see this is for the lcd display while the DHT library is for the DHT22 temperature sensor. As you can see, these are the libraries included. So now, having seen all this and um, having seen the libraries we need, we will go over to our WOKWI platform. Then we are going to redraw this circuit diagram. Oh, okay, we are just going to open a new one. So let the, let's get the components. We need the LCD 16 by 2 I2C. And we need the DHT22 temperature sensor. Just type it there. Next, we, have to, we need to follow the connection instructions as given on this place. VCC and ground of the sensor we go to the VCC and ground of the Arduino respectively. Same thing for the ground pin. As you can see we are making complete reference to the chat GPT instructions. So this is how we can utilize chat GPT in our embedded system projects then next the data pin of the sensor goes to pin 2 on the arduino board so that's the sda that is the data pin we are taking it to pin 2 on the arduino board so the dht sensor has been connected next is the i2c 
LCD display, the 16 by 2 LCD display. So the SDA pin is going to go to A4 of the Arduino, while the SCL will go to A5 on the Arduino board, and then the ground and VCC will be connected respectively to the ground and VCC of the Arduino board. We are done with the connections. Next is the code aspect. The coding aspect. So we'll copy this code from this and um, we'll copy the code snippet. And then we're just gonna copy this and replace with what we copied. So now there are some libraries involved. The DHT library and Liquid Crystal I2C. So before we proceed, we need to install this library. If if not, we're not gonna get the expected result when we simulate. So we'll come over to library manager, click on the plus sign and type in DHT. We can see the DHT sensor library and also we can see DHT22 down there. Then the Liquid Crystal ISOC already installed on its own. So let's install the DHT22 sensor library as well. So our libraries are installed. Let's go ahead and simulate and see what we will have. Okay, our project is up and running. We can see the temperature and the humidity being displayed. So we are going to simulate it, but let's bring it down so that we can see the LCD screen very well. Alright, so let's um, increase the temperature now. Let's see what happens on the LCD. It increases as well to the same as on the on the um, on the line. Same thing with humidity, humidity reduce as well. So let's increase it. Alright, so this is it for project 3, our mini weather station using the chat GPT AI. So I'm gonna explain the code and then we'll move on to project 4. See you in the next episode. Thank you. Okay, welcome to the code explanation of project 3. So for project 3, we built a mini weather station using, using the DHT sensor and the LCD display. So projects from line 1 and 2, we included the libraries that we installed, the liquid crystal i2c.h and um, the DHT sensor library. Then in line 4, we define the DHT pin as digital pin 2 and uh, we also define the DHT type we are using which is line 20, DHT 22 so, sorry we define that in line 5 and 6 then in line 8 we set the I2C address of the LCD which is um, 0x27 16 by 2 we specify the type of LCD Coming over to the void setup, line 11 we initialized the DHT sensor, the LCD, the LCD back backlights. Then from line 14 to 16, 
when the device is set up initially it's going to print the temperature then it will set cursor to 0 0,1 and it's gonna print humidity so what this means is that is gonna set the cursor on the first row then on the second column remember that the Arduino starts from zero to count so when we are talking of the first column on the Arduino um, in reality we are talking of the second column so that is that's where it's gonna print humidity so coming over to the loop we created a float variable called temperature which is dht the read temperature this is an inbuilt function so we use floats here so that we can also get the into the decimal integers the next is um, we created another variable humidity with the value dht the read humidity this is another inbuilt function from the dht sensor library then line 23 to 29 takes care of the positioning and the printing on the LCD then we have a delay of 1000 seconds it refreshes every 1000 seconds to capture new temperature data so that is the good explanation for project 3 we'll see in project 4 see you in the next episode thank you to project 4 in project 3 we built a mini weather station so for project 4 we are going to be building on um, a security system with the PIR motion sensor and we'll be using two LEDs a red and green LED so when the PIR sensor goes high that is when it senses motion the red LED comes on but when there is no motion detected, the green LED stays on and we will be interfacing it with the LCD 16x2i2c as well. So we are going to tell all this to the chat GPT and ask it to generate an Arduino code for it as well as explain how the connections will be made. Okay, so that is it. We have to explain what we want to achieve in this project so that it will know how to generate the code. Okay, I omitted the green LED here. 
so let's send it okay remember what i said about having this error you just need to copy your request and refresh the page so when you see that error don't panic after refreshing the page you just paste it and send again okay, so it's generating the code for it is initializing the LCD display in the setup it has declared the pin mode then in the loop it's gonna give the following commands if the sensor pin is high LED red comes on and it prints it prints it out on the LCD display as well it has explained it so now it's gonna explain how the connections are made So you can see the VCC and the ground respectively going to the VCC and ground of the Arduino. Then the output pin of the sensor goes to pin 2 on the Arduino board. And we can see the connections of the LED and for the LCD display as well. So this is the Arduino code. These are the connections, how the connections are made. So we'll go back to our work we, and we have to start from scratch again. So now we'll get the components we need. We need the PIR, PIR sensor. The PIR is a motion sensor. We need red LED and green LED. Now of course we need two resistors to back it up. And finally we need the LCD display so we'll get all this and set up the connection as instructed by chat GPT LED connections are set. Now let's connect the PIR sensor. 5 volts to 5 volts, ground to ground. The data pin goes to pin 2, digital pin 2. So we'll change the color. Now let's connect the LCD display. Ground goes to ground. 5 volt as VCC goes to VCC and finally SDA goes to A4 and SCL goes to A5 we we'll change the color to avoid mix up ok and this is the circuit diagram so after following the instructions, we'll copy this code, copy it and take note of the library there. So we'll paste it and we'll get the library that was used, the Liquid Crystal I2C, Liquid Crystal. 
that is it the others the library will be using so next we will simulate and see what we'll have so it is up and running no motion detected so let's simulate a motion and see motion detected so when we click on that button simulate motion it's um it's actually it simulates a motion just as when you are using the sensor real life if you move your hand over it it detects motion so that is what um the simulate the simulate button does there so when there's motion it, the red led comes on so when there's no motion it goes off and the green led is on so we have a little um the characters are too much so we we'll start the simulation and edit some write-ups from the sketch so we'll reduce this to no motion let's simulate again and see what we'll have Okay, it is still too much. It is still too much. It is still too much. So let's stop and we have one more. Okay, line 28. Line 28. We'll shorten it from line 28. First of all, let's save our project. Motion sensor. So from line 28. We have to get rid of detected and leave no motion. So let's simulate and see what we are going to have. Okay, good, and it is okay now. The green LED is on. When we simulate motion, the red LED will come on and it will change to motion detected. If you close it, goes in good back, it good goes back to no motion detected. So we're having a little glitch there because um we are simulating it virtual and these um components might have a little uh let's say effects so that is it for this project for Welcome to the code explanation of project 4 Starting from um, line 1 First of all project 4 we built a small security system using the PIR motion sensor Which when no motion is detected The green LED will remain on Then when there is motion detected the red LED comes on And it displays on the LCD as well we made use of um, a 16 by 2 LCD with its I2C. So in line 1, we included the LCD library here. In line 3, we defined the PIR sensor pin as pin 2, the red LED pin as pin 3, the green LED pin as pin 4. In line 7, we set up the liquid crystal I2C address. Then in the, in the setup, pin 10, 11, 12, we declare the various PIR pin, red LED pin, green LED pin as input and output, output pins respectively. Then we also initialize the LCD and um, a default text of no motion will be printed on the LCD. Then in the loop, we use an uh, if condition here. If digital read PIR pin is gonna be reading from the PIR which is pin 2 if it reads a high voltage or a high signal the red LED will come on while the green one goes low and the LCD is gonna print out motion detected else the red LED will go low the green will come on and the LCD will print out no motion detected with um, a delay time of 1000 milliseconds that is the system refreshes every one second to check for motion 
So that is the code explanation for project 4. Audio jungle. Hello, welcome to another dimension of this episode. In this in this episode, we won't be working on any project. Rather, we are going to explain how to use the chat GPT to fix error in Arduino code. So, having understood that, having understood that this chat GPT is a text-based platform, we need to understand how it works in fixing errors. First, an important step is we need to identify the error. This is always the first step in fixing Arduino code. We can identify the error by checking the error message. This gives us a clue to what the error is. Next is we have to copy out the error message. Once we have identified it, we copy it. And we'll, this is what we are going to paste in the chat GPT for it to generate a solution. So after having copied the error message, we come over to the chat GPT and we paste it in the um, text box with other suitable explanations or yeah other explanations so that the chat GPT knows what exactly to do. Now we'll enter the message and we'll send it and sit back and wait for it to generate answers or, or solution to the problem we have. Um, in a scenario where the chat GPT does not come up with a good answer or its solution does not solve ours, all we have to do is to repeat the process and probably add more detailed information or rephrase the sentence. Or we can copy the whole code snippet that was given the error and paste into the text box of the chat GPT, which I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to write a simple code for blinking an LED and that will purposely make some errors. So I'm going to copy the code and paste it in the chat GPT text box and see what it does. So remember to always double check the suggested um, fixes by the chat GPT so that we don't end up um, mixing up the project and doing another project that we don't want to do. So after the chat GPT has generated, has generated its own solution, we need to cross check and test and make sure it is in line with the project we wanted to do. So now, like I said, I'm going to write a simple blink sketch that will blink an LED and I'll purposely make some errors and I'll try, fix, I'll try to fix it using the chat GPT. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to write the blink sketch. Let's say I connected the LED to pin 8. I'll be using pin 8 for it. Then when I'm declaring the pin mode, you know, normally it's a capital M for the mode, but I'm going to use a small M. I'm going to do that purposely. Then let I'll declare that output. Then coming over to the loop, I'm gonna um, trigger the LED on. Then I'll add a delay of 1000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to one second, and I'll omit the close the closing semicolon there. Then I'll write I'll trigger the LED low. Then I'll add another delay of 1000 milliseconds. So now we'll try verifying this code. Remember, I purposely made some errors. So we'll try verifying this code and we'll see that um, it won't work. We are going to get error messages. Okay, I need to upload my Arduino board first. I need to upload it, so let me do that. Okay, uh, I have now I'm going to select the ports. It's um come eleven. And I'll select Arduino, you know, from the boards. 
okay so let's go ahead and verify again good good now we have errors we have errors in the code so i'm just gonna copy the whole code snippet and i'll come over to my chat gpt tab where is it chat gpt okay sorry okay yeah, this is the chat gpt and then i'm gonna paste the codes the code i copied from the arduino here yeah? then remember i'm going to add another information telling the charts what i want to do and the error that occurred so the arduino code above has errors then i'll tell it to rewrite an arduino code that will blink an led we have to be specific so that it knows it knows the solution is going to generate Okay, so write the correct Arduino code. Okay, so it has spotted the errors starting with the M and the closing semicolon. So it's generating a new code for it. Probably, yeah, with those errors fixed. So um, let's check the new code. You can see the error has been fixed, the M is capital. The closing semicolon has been added. So this is uh, one of the ways we can now uh, identify, we can fix Arduino errors using the chat GPT. So we'll just copy this code and come over to our Arduino IDE. And we'll paste it and try verifying again. Oops, okay, line 13 isn't meant to be there. It's not part of the code. We'll get rid of it and verify again. So when uh, we verified successfully, so we just used chat GPT to fix the error we had in our code. So for the issue of copying and pasting, um, it's especially when you don't, when you have no clue at all, at, you have no clue at all to what the error is. So you just copy the whole code, paste in the chat GPT text box, and um, specify what you want tell it the project you're trying to do and the error you're getting hello welcome back to this episode which is going to be the last episode for this series and in the last episode we purposely wrote a wrong blink sketch and uploaded the code and it did not work so we had to copy the whole code to chat gpt to figure out the error now in this place we are going to make an omitment and this time around it's going to generate an error in the um debugging part so i'm going to copy the error code to chat gpt that is the method i will use for this one so that is what we will be doing here so what i'm gonna do is that let's say i'll change this to a capital t i'll change that to a capital t and of course it's going to give us error when we try verifying because um we use a capital t here and we have small letter t in the code so it's going to definitely generate an error so let's verify and see the error we'll have so of course we had errors we had errors so we are going to copy this error message this is the error message we are going to copy We'll copy this okay well, first of all we'll copy this one 
you need to copy the code as well then we'll come to chat GPT then we have to see what happened okay what we want the code to do so So the above code is meant to display the values from the DHT22 sensor on the LCD. It's meant to display the values gotten from DHT22 sensor on the LCD. 16 by 2 but after verifying we get the error below we need to be um, specific and explain what really happened so that it knows how to help ok after verifying we got the following error so we are going to put it inside protection mark then we will come back to the Arduino and copy this error and come back to the chat GPT inside this protection we put it Then we're gonna tell it write the or oh, let's say okay what is wrong with with the code so we are going to send this and see the response we get to Remember when you have something like this, don't panic. All you have to do is just to refresh. So let's copy this. You are going to refresh. Let's wait a little while for the page to refresh completely. You see it has refreshed, so we are going to paste the question again. Then we'll send it out. So you can see it has spotted out the error, the temperature, the one I changed to the small letter, so it has fixed it, is writing the loop as a whole. So if I copy this. This is just the loop function and come back to my Arduino interface and change the loop and verify again. This time around the upload was successful. So this is how we use the chat GPT to fix errors. Then I always emphasize that we specify that it should be an Arduino code. Because we can just put up something like write a code. Okay, let's um we already here, so it's going to still know that it's Arduino. So let's open a new chat. I will tell it to write a code that will blink an LED so let's see if it's going to generate Arduino code
Okay, it generates Arduino code, but sometimes there are some codes you put and it might generate a Python code or JavaScript code. So, um, is regardless, it's important to specify that it is an Arduino code. So that is it for this series. We've built projects, we've corrected errors, we've also used it to write and program codes using the chat GPT, which is a focus AI for this series. So thank you and thanks for watching.